You wanna make money on MMA? Let be. You wanna know who to put it in your parlay? Let be. You wanna know a DraftKings stay away? Let be. So, who has the Leslie Smith underdog pick? Who was the Mexican dude and the lesbian chick? Everybody say you mean, let's vote when the bean. Who's that out there living they dream? Let's vote when the bean. Who's that still smoking all the green? Let's vote and the bean. Come on, y'all, let me hear you scream. Let's vote when the bean. Welcome back to Let's Bow and the Bean. We got UFC 222 in the books. What a fun weekend. Welcome back to YouTube. If you Hello. haven't, haven't liked and subscribed, remember, what a fun show. Ended up going a little bit late. A changing of the guard card ended up happening to an extent. Christiana Cyborg still proved that she is the baddest woman on the planet. But Frank Did she though? Did she though? Yeah, but it, that's the whole thing with her is that she's not finding people in her weight class and the competition level isn't there, but is it her fault? We'll have to get there. So, from the bottom to the top, we had Milstead versus Jordan Johnson. Jordan Johnson winning via decision. Just saying, if you've been following Lab B at all, you realize that Lesbo went 8 out of 12 last night. The Bean himself, 9 out of 12. Mm. That's cashing some money. Nine we had 12. <laughs> <laughs> we had some real good um, underdogs picked as well. No Leslie Smith pick, but there was enough way to make money on the night. There could have been a Leslie Smith pick. Could have. Could have ended up switching later on on the card. T-City, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jordan Johnson, Milstead actually looked real quick, way, way better. He moved down to 205, looked fast, could take an okay punch. His gas tank wasn't really there at all. Jordan Johnson used that wrestling pressure and wrestling to really get through it in jiu-jitsu. Um, I'm going to take a step back on Johnson on his hype train a little bit, and I'm going to actually give Milstead a bit more. I think he can beat other people other than Johnson in this division now at 205. He looked really good for those first few minutes, but got to keep working on that gas tank. Um, excited to see both fighters as they go on. Anything I, did, I missed this fight. I didn't get to see it. I don't even want to try to blow sunshine. <laughs> so then we had Cody Stamen defeating Brian Caraway via decision. 100% right on this for the bean. Caraway's just lost a step, unfortunately. Car yeah. he, he just... I am so biased when it comes to Caraway. I just can't even see him doing anything wrong. <laughs> I, it's, just, it's really a personal, but I did... I was like, kick, punch. Yep. Kick, punch. I was trying something. Combo. Now throw it. Go for the take, not the same takedown, not the same takedown again, so, not the same takedown again. He already stuffed that one. He knows that one. And then it was like nine of those over and over again. Like they were doing a drill almost. Like almost I go in, you push me down. I get up. credit to Stamen's um, takedown defense was saying that earlier in the week that he actually had some pretty good fundamental wrestling because those were really good entries and Caraway was getting in deep. Stamen was using his biceps and forearms to really uh, frame off and keep his hips away. When they did get to the ground a few times, Stamen backed right up. Good fight IQ. Car Honestly, I don't want to be racist, sure. but we're, when you were watching the fight at any point, did you think, who's who? No, not at all. <laughs> Stamen's so much more muscular than Caraway. Caraway looked, looked like a 40-year-old dad who smokes and... Stamen looked oh, like he was a little bricked up. But Stamen was, I thought they looked like the same, like they had the same facial hair and the same hair. Like oh, the I same didn't think hair color. Huh. I don't know, maybe I was watching it on a little screen. <laughs> it might have been that, on that fight pass. So, I'm going to still care away and beat a lot of people. I think that people are going to really start fading Caraway, and he came on heavy in that third round. And if it wasn't for the gas tank and a fight IQ of Stamen, um, Caraway could have gotten away with that. Split decision city all fucking night long. We did have Adelaide Bird making her first appearance in the octagon. If you what? don't know about Adelaide, she drives in with a Porsche. Joe Rogan DC were commentating it as well. Like, hey, she might like a fighter who tends to be a little bit better looking because that's kind of the criteria. She's been known for some of the worst calls in officiating history with Canelo and Triple G. Look back at that, but 
We had more split decisions in this night than I can remember in a very long time. And there was a few boos because it would be 29-28 to the opposing fighter and the whole crowd is like, wow, that was a 30-27 fight. Easy. I am not stoked on the Vegas judging at all. It used to be one of my favorite places for yep. the fights to be at. It's not anymore. Florida gets a harsh rap. I thought the judges did okay here. I'd agree with that. Yeah. I'd agree with that. It was definitely... Uh, well, I just... Ugh, can mixed. we have our own judges? Can we have our own scoring system? Ten points makes zero sense in some... How can you have the exact same... Ten points is anything I can do with these. Okay. Fair. Sure. Let's at least have a 50-point system. So anything I can do with these, anything I can do with mm -hmm. takedowns, anything we do with transit, like... I, there's so many other aspects to this game, and I don't need a boxing judge judging it. It makes zero sense. I totally agree, and what people have been bringing up as of late as well is the fact that there is no such thing as a unified rules. If it's unified, then New York wouldn't be on the new rules or the old rules. Or, like, there is no unification. They call it that because it's the worldwide belt, but, it, you know... We really got to do make these bigger changes and unify it, whatever. Leslie Smith herself is trying to unify the fighters together. And she was actually put, putting out a bunch of good stuff via the Twitterverse. She was actually telling T-City himself, like, hey, you want to do something for the good for the kids? How about you post this organization of uni unionizing the fighters? And that's going to help more people than you even know. And that's Pretty the truth. True. Did he repost and it? He didn't repost it. She retweeted it to him, and I don't know if he's commented it, but he's I saw handsome. it on some light. I saw the Christopher Walken thing. Yeah, that was And good. I never thought Christopher Walken was handsome. But I agreed. think T-City is handsome. So. We'll get there, I guess. Agreed, agreed. We had Mike Pyle at 170 pounds versus Ottawa. I mean Otto. <laughs> so wait, Stamen, where does Stamen go from oh, here? Oh, Stamen, I'm still, I'm going to bet him against a lot of people. I think he's definitely in that top 10 range, top 12 range. Caraway, I'm going to be putting against a lot of other guys. People are going to start a fade Caraway, and that's exactly where I make my money I on agree. Caraway. Exactly, Stamen's better than people think. Caraway's better than people think. Caraway still on DraftKings got like over 40 points on a loss. On a loss. That's a perfect, and, and he was cheap enough to like, okay. So if somebody doesn't have that good of take, then the defensive statement they're getting put to the ground that entire fight because that was 15 20 shots again as we were saying before with caraway money to be made there money to be made on to pile versus auto this was the retirement fight for pile you could see why he was doing all right but as we were saying before on the podcast as soon as pile gets hurt with anything or hit with anything he just stiffens up and he looks like he's a zombie stiff legs Wobbles to the ground, unfortunately. That's the way he finished it. You could see he was really upset by it, but that chin is gone. Don't even have to say get out of here because you have left. I think we already said before the fight fruition. started. Mm. That's why we had Otto on a lot of cards. He actually cashed a lot for me. It was a chin. 100% the There's chin. There's going to be money to made on betting against Jack, or Jack Otto. Otto. I agree. Zach Otto. Zach Otto. I 100% agree. People are going to think he's a stand a banger. crusher because he hasn't had a finish in X amount of years. And then he got his first finish in the UFC against a fighter that probably should have stepped away two fights ago. And here we get sent to weird. This is where also it gets weirdsville. But I do feel like this was a right call by the refs. And I really like that the refs took a step back and asked Herb and other refs in there. And they came out with the conclusion. This was Hector Lombard versus CB Dalloway. 100%. Can't trust CB Dalloway's chin. Said that before. 100%. Hector Lombard, the cheating asshole. We've seen him do multiple things in fights to do whatever Cheating he can asshole. to win. <laughs> that was cheap as hell, and they made the right call. I'm just call. saying, I would rather have, if we are at a UFC event and Jessica I comes tearing after me, would rather way have that than Hector Lombard. <laughs> good, good point. Good, good point. Hector Lombard will rip an arm off. Especially like, if he's not allowed to fight. <laughs> you might get boomeranged, I'm just saying. <laughs> This is true, but might be have a lawsuit. You better be there recording it, because I will just go into <laughs> a bear mode. I'll just crumple up into a little ball and be like, ah, I'm dead. I'm, de I'm Yep. I'll do a CB doll away and be like, I can't walk. I, I can't walk. I can't see what happened. Not to Who say CB. I? Not to say that CB wasn't playing the game there. CB also was looking for a way out. 
regardless because it worked out for him. He did get a disqualification. That so at the end of the first round, not much happened. They were like getting a D. lot of wounds. Cooper, he wanted out of that plane. <laughs> he was looking for a way out, and he found it, and it worked out for his best interest. CB Dolo or uh, Hector though landed two punches after the bell rang uh, via the Iron Lady, but this was. The jab was iffy. That was right on the bell. But the straight right, right behind it was a full two seconds after. The ref himself even said time in the jab. Hector could have pulled that punch. Everybody knows who has ever stricken knows, oh, you just pull that punch back and it's not whatever. Hector could have done that at the beginning of the second round and finished the fight. But he was trying to also play a game and... Was calling it like, oh yeah, you're done, you're done. But that was late. There's no way that was. We fucking talked out about late. this card being the changing of the guard a few times, and interesting enough, we also talk about the veteranship and how these veterans know what they get away with. They're not getting points taken for dick kicks. They're not getting points taken for eye pokes. They're not getting points taken for strikes after the bell. Yep. So we see all the veterans tonight really take advantage of knowing what they know about the sport, and some of them it cost them. You know, and this is one of the examples. So This is one of those examples. Hector Lombard, looking to fade your ass as soon as I can. Same with CB Dalloway. CB had the back injury. Now has had a couple finishes and it's... Can't trust it, yeah. Hector Lombard's still going to ruin a night or two of mine here to come. Because I'm not going to vote vote on him or put him on my cards sure. anymore. And he's still going to finish nights in the first round with that monkey punch. Though... He's on a four fight losing streak with a disqualification for an illegal hit. I think that this could be his walking papers. Right? No, he's out of Coconut Creek, Florida, came out of Cuba, but I believe is an American. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we got Yoel. We don't need that anyone else representing. Yeah. Well, I think with the illegal that, with the okay. illegal shot, as I'm saying, I think Lombard could get his walking papers. I think the UFC can be like, you're on a four fight losing streak, and that was pretty weird. We're just going to let you go. Because there's no way he was had an extra fight unless he won this. Like, this was make or break for him, and it, he broke it. Yeah, I don't really care about either fighter going forward. On to John Dodson versus Mark Munoz. Not Mark Munoz, uh, Pedro Munoz. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Mark Munoz? He's a light heavyweight. Oh, okay. At least yeah. he's a fighter. Wrestler. He's yeah. not like an e commentator. No, he's, no, or... he's an old school <laughs> Filipino guy. So, this ended up being one of the more stagnant fights of the night. It was whether Munoz could get Dotson to the ground, and it never happened. Uh, Dotson backpedaled the whole time. Winkle John game plan ran back the whole time. Landed his shots. He got pieced up. Didn't get pieced up, but. Um, John Dodson's little Ninja Turtle head helped him out with some of those shots because he ate a couple hard ones that against other fighters he with better strikes. Turtle. He is a little Ninja Turtle. Um, he He's just starting to get hit more because his game plan has always been movement and he's starting to slow down just a bit. Gas Tank also really started to take a hit for John Dodson. But with Munoz, he just has to get a little bit better as well in the striking range in those takedowns. As we were saying before, prior to the fights, Munoz doesn't have a good takedown entries and has to jump over things in order to get you or jump under you against the guy with good wrestling. He'll this stay away from so that. It was so boring to me. It was very, very boring. And would you feel like part of the boredom came from how many times we've broke it down, how long we've waited for it, and it's like, why are we waiting for this fight? Why are they trying so hard to keep put it on? Maybe it's just not meant to be. Let's just separate this. Let's just dee, 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 dee. decision city for John Dotson. I'm not. I'm gonna start to look to fade John Dotson. I feel like he's yeah. gonna be start to be exploited a little bit more if Munoz doesn't get those takedowns in order. He could be a monster because he's got okay striking and on the ground he's a beast. It's that transition. It's MMA. It's not boxing could and jujitsu. Do you think the Jackson Wink strategy could be exploited a little bit at this point? I think people are starting to, and they're starting to do that with pace. They're starting to realize. Just come forward, pressure, pressure, yeah, pressure. Yeah, because to break. if you're running the whole time, you're still running. You're still out of movement, and that forward pressure. I think judges, maybe not these judges, but I do feel like a lot of judges are like, "Whoa, that guy was backing up the whole time." We need to start a hashtag. We that's part of the thing that Leslie Smith or the organization really needs to take. It's not safe for the fighters. To have shitty refs in the ring and shitty judges on the outside. It's part, it really has to change. I, the system's crazy. 
And I know in boxing, it is better than boxing. I will say that. If yep. you actually watch boxing matches, how many robberies or close fights that you see that you're like, no way. No way, no day. They're a lot further away than a lot of these. This is mm-hmm. sometimes like... There there was a fight. I know we'll get up to it later tonight. It might even be really like the next fight after the Darius <laughs> fight. But we are like, oh my gosh, if this goes that way, it's a friggin' robbery. And I think everyone was on the edge of their seats thinking, this is not happening right now. This bitch about to win a split decision undeservedly. She shouldn't even have had a split at all. Anyway. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Anyway, I think we can go into that. I think it was the surprise of the night. I do feel like, though, that John Dotson was a split decision to Munoz. And so was the Caraway, which was those earlier yeah. splits that we or were no, talking about. The D- John Dotson was split decision to Dotson. Munoz to Dotson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said Dotson to Dotson. But either way, and it was Caraway. What was the other split no, that we had? No, I was had? just saying that the split decision went to Dotson. You said it went to Munoz. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. I meant, um, I was saying that the fights that they were fighting in the ones that went to split, uh-huh. it was Caraway was a split decision, which I thought Stamen had three, two of those to three uh-huh. of those rounds easy. Uh-huh. Munoz never had a round for me closer. Then we had Darius versus Hernandez. Hernandez coming in with nothing to lose. After weigh-ins, I was actually saying Hernandez looked like a fucking tank. That dude was shredded. Big chest, big arms. I didn't recognize him. Blitzed. Blitzed, blitzed. Benil Dariush. All credit due to Barry Dariush. He wants to fight anyone, doesn't care who it is. Came in short notice, was a heavy favorite, minus 400. Came out and was exposed. Ranzi Nijum got him out of there the same way. Blitzing Benil Dariush and just trying to hit that chin can win you the fight for Dariush. Unfortunately for him... He's starting to have chin issues. You're starting to see with Benio, like, he has all the talent in the yeah. world. He has amazing striking, great ground game. Sometimes willing to eat a shot, to give a shot, but he's not able to hold that chin up anymore. And at Black House, we've been told multiple times over that they used to strike really hard back in the day. I don't know if they're still doing it now or whatever, but I think Benio needs to take a good six months to a year off, which is easy for me to say when I'm not getting paid. Yeah, you don't have a whole camp uh, and whatever else right. going on. Where I'm sure he's like, give me whoever, I can beat most guys in the world. But there's fucking monsters, up and comers like Hernandez. And I remember before the podcast saying, Hernandez is going to do well after Benio. It's just too big of a step up. Guess what? Wasn't too big of a step up. Hernandez is going to be someone I'm going to be really looking forward to. But I think a lot of people saw that yeah, in last night. Into the fight. I don't right. want to get too hyped on Hernandez. I'm just starting to think that maybe Darius is should be faded a little quicker than I was anticipating fading him. And I don't totally. want to get too high on Hernandez yet because I didn't really see him do anything. Yeah, I mean, he did that the oh, whole it's first a good part. Game, man. Yeah, yeah. But it's, like, very scary. Now I'm real like, I, the Oga- the Nuganu in my head. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get high on a guy that we've only seen 42 seconds of, 42, you know, when they start having those quick knockouts that it's like, whoa, okay, what happens after this 42 seconds? True. Good, good and point. so with Benil, he doesn't have that chin that could take the onslaught for most of the fighters in the UFC now is 42 seconds. So I'm just, I'm just going to be weary going forward more about Hernandez, and I kind of know what to expect out of Darius. I feel like I, I feel like I've seen him. I've seen you. I feel like I get it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Fun fights away for either fighter. I don't think Benil has to get out yet. I don't I think, think so, fights but him. that's where I'm saying he might need like a year off, like let that chin yeah. fully heal. You've been, he's been in a lot he's of fights a as of late. Cat. Can't we have him ringside? Can't we have him judging? Can't we have him refing? <laughs> that's what I think we should give to these judges. Can't we have Dan Henderson in there being the ref? I think he'd do a good job. That's what I want to see my retired fighters do. Frank Trigg, who was a fighter, who then does stunt work, and Herb Dean was a fighter, around. right? Even though he's no, not he never fa- fought. He's not a good example. Herb Dean never fought. No? No, never fun. Uh, does some ground stuff, though. Maybe some competitions, I feel like, in jiu-jitsu and stuff like that. But uh, there's not uh, people UFC, saying... Yeah, but, yeah, but there's people saying as well, like, not all fighters make good refs. And I could see that as well. I know guys that were awesome at wrestling who didn't give two shits. They're like, my coach, give me the game plan. I do the game plan. I go home. I don't care about whatever. They tell me well, to look I at think tape. That, I look. Yeah, that goes so, without saying. Everything. I don't think every fighter would be a good judge. I think there still would have to be a test. I just think not only would it make it more exciting for the fans to see ex-fighters at that spot, mm-hmm. it would also give fighters 
a career to roll into that isn't just broadcasting. I think, and I think that would be good for the fans. And I think they could learn all the skill set of it. It even seemed like it make more sense to somebody who's actually been in there. They know when somebody's actually in danger and when they're not. You, you know, it's yep. not the layman's terms of just what they've been told. And I think a lot of the submission games, the higher level it gets, or even, I mean, we'll get into that fight later on, but like Sugar, like if you're a fucking ref in that fight, how do you make that call and... You know, how interesting is that whole thing? I mean, right. we'll get onto it, but just those little intricacies that you probably don't learn that in school. Like, what do you do from here? How long do you give the fighter? Is it just a nerve? Is it a break? Is it dangerous to them? Is it just a foot? And that doesn't make it life threatening at all. I don't know. It seems like a. If you listen to Big John, he does schools and stuff and talks about situations like that. So they depends on where they went to school, but they do get exposed to some of that stuff. Either way. We had Mackenzie Dern debuting against Ashley Yoder. I actually put, This was a dirty split, right? This was a disgusting dirty split. Okay. This was a 29-28 Yoder at one point in time. I wish I had the Fred Norris button from Howard Stern that I could go, dirty split, and it was the sound of Justin Timberlake, dirty pop, but it said dirty, dirty split. split. Yeah. So, Dern being a minus 375 roughly before the bout started was likely to get a submission in there. As we say with a lot of these jiu-jitsu people here at Lab B, no takedowns. And it proved somebody who has zero, Ashley Oyer has been taken down in every single one of her fights, had 100% takedown defense against Dern. Who, that's what she's supposed to be able to do. So, there's that's money to be made. That's what she's supposed to be able to Dern. How you Dern? <laughs> How you Dern, How your mama Dern? Did you, by the way, see the video that I ended up sending you of the accent that has changed over time for Mackenzie Turner? No, I wanted to watch that, though, and it seemed really funny. In, like, 2009, 2010, Valley, California girl, sounds like any high school chick that you're ever going to meet down in the South, um, West. As the so years Cal. has gone, so Cal, as the years have gone on, you just see her with... Not to just jump on the bandwagon and give her shit for it. She has specifically has family in Brazil and went down probably in those like 16 to 20 years, formative years of your life, where she's like, all my brothers, all my friends be like this. <laughs> oh. Like, it was just so, so now she has such a Brazilian accent and look it up. It's pretty interesting. Either way, she's going to make a lot more money than most fighters because of her looks and everything, but there's so much money to be made against her if she can't get other women I in the ground. I have to say about the looks thing, it, I feel like unless there's a skill behind it, you're, and people can say everything about Rhonda, but part of the reason that Rhonda was such a hot sell is because of the looks mixed with the skill set, and people can say, oh, she got fed cans. Really? She got fed the whole 135 division that still fights right now? In fact, we had a fighter, you know, like, come on, it wasn't all cans. Like, Rhonda just did what Rhonda did, and her looks added to the bonus of that. So, darn, she's young, but... That wasn't a great performance she against she someone she should have ran Ronda through. Rousey. She, she didn't sh come out and run. At Rousey. minus three, whatever, she should have ran right through her, got her to the ground, finished her. Um, Yoder was doing well on the defense as well. Sorry. I think that Yoder, can, there can be some other weird split decision. She's not going to be any, neither of these women are going to be a champ anytime soon. Don't jump on that high train, is kind of just what we're getting at. Yeah, and Yoder, she looked better, but. I don't know how much growth I expect out of a fighter at 30. And I do believe old dogs learn new tricks. And I do think in this women's division, it, like at the 135, we're seeing the older fighters over 30 still maintain yep. and get better and grow. Um, the 115, I feel like it's the same as the guy division where it's a little harder to keep the speed mm -hmm. when you're getting older. And so that youth is really important for the lower weight classes. How did you feel about Yoder's? square offs before the few days before she's one of the few women that wore a full dress earrings did her hair wore makeup didn't look anything like a fighter i actually really liked it i really liked yoder's hold on the way up and when she got in there she got down she didn't back down I just at all like in when the they're fight. their type of girl like yeah. holly she looks super femme but she looks femme fatale when she's in yoga her pants all day every day she looks like she could get on um a crotch rocket motorcycle 
<laughs> That's what yeah. you know. She has her long boots on and her uh-huh. pointed blue jacket with her high ponytail. She looks like a droid from the future. <laughs> like they all have their looks. Sometimes you know, like one of our favorite fighters, Shevchenko. Sometimes she looks friggin' beautiful, Agreed. and then other times I'm like. Could she just put that hair up in a bun? <laughs> she don't have to have that nest all the way out. <laughs> just put that in a bun today, girl. Or put some frizzies in that. A little, what's that, mane? That horse shampoo that all the girls use? Oh, like uh-huh. tail and mane or something? <laughs> so. I'm not high on Dern going forward. And I want to, I'm like, oh, Yoder impressed me. But it's against. I think both women, I think there's a little money to be made on Yoder going forward if they try to feed, you know, the other good people to mm-hmm. her. I think she's going to squash some hype trains. And I think watch out for Dern because moving up in this 115 division, there's no room for that. There's no, even what, who's she going to fight next? In the, like, now I don't mean low end, but I just mean in the bottom, like, 15, like the top girls. Carla Esparza. I'm, that's what I'm saying. She, Carla they gave Esparza? her somebody that she should have ran through already and yeah. she didn't. The 115 is a division to me that's getting super thick of talent. Quickly. Quick, too quickly. Yep. That it's dangerous for Dern going forward. God darn it. <laughs> so, we had a fight that went the distance huh. in the heavyweights. I was saying this a bit earlier. Like, no, 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 this no is... don't skip cat. Oh, sorry. Damn. <laughs> I thought I you were talking over. about the heavyweights. I'm like, damn, you brave as hell. <laughs> you brave as hell calling them girls heavyweights. <laughs> so we're into the main card. Um, we had Kat Zingano versus Caitlin Vieira in a decision. Changing of the guard. Changing of the guard. Cat lost a step. Those knees are gone. Those knees are so that was gone. was worrisome. A few uh, times in that fight. Right. Caitlin was landing shots. Caitlin has great takedown defense, good on the ground, solid hips, very strong in the hips. Vieira being undefeated is really proving that um, she's a contender. There's fights she can lose. Even though Vieira looked good, I do think that Cat was in a referral potential. So people that are really hyping this one out of the water, Cat was on one knee pretty much that entire fight. And we saw it right from the beginning. Yep. Something weird happened with her knee to ankle. Yeah, it was a weird. And she's had multiple sur- surgeries on both knees. So I could see Kat even stepping away from the but sport. But something else we soon. said, regardless of what you want to say about Kat Zingano, is she, almost like Frankie Edgar, you're not going to finish Kat. Like, you're going to have to kill her to, to get her out of off. there. Yeah. yeah. So the fact, it's a testament to me that Vieira, like, she kept the grind on her. Kat has a pretty good wrestling game, and it did not look that way in that fight at mm-hmm. all. So that's impressive to me. I liked Vieira's body. I think there's room for her to grow. She had that, like, twiny, thick underneath body, not the shredded body, which makes me think, oh, she might have good cardio. She might be somebody who watched for five-round fights going forward. I still like Cat. I think there's money to be made on Cat. The thing Ooh. that I think that the UFC should do with Cat, take her name, move it to Invicta. You own that organization. And I think Cat could still be a champ in Invicta. Invicta. Yeah. Invicta. But that's where I'm saying but out Invicta, of the UFC. The UFC or yeah. owns it. Yeah, and I think right. let Cat ride out her fame. If she still wants to fight, make let money. her do it. Yeah. And I think she's grinder enough with a skill set enough to really make an impact over there, there still. And show kind of the women this what you're going to hit going over there. Are you sure you want this? So I, I I still like Kat going forward. I know that's crazy, but I just think she has some grind that Misha lost. There was she, Granted, Kat didn't get punched in the face by Amanda Nunes. There's <laughs> like... Right. But I, I know that's crazy, even her age and the way her knees look, but I just think there's a skill set in the sport. There's a grind that Kat gives that she showed me she still had. She, I thought she was going to get finished a few times in that fight. It was close. With Vieira, just what I'm going to really like in the future for her was she was using that wizard incredibly well. Oh, she was using you it to so defend. dead on that. The wizard she was using defensively, and then she was using it offensively to get to full mount immediately. But she was able to do that in the later rounds, which is going to be tough for anybody. Her striking, her left hook, which anybody with a left hook, regardless, is always a dangerous fighter. And she has stiff punches in there. Some people to look out for. Uh, that was a fun one, even though it went to decision. I, I it was, it was really, all right. It, it was, was wrestling fun. fun, even though there yeah, wasn't was a, a lot of punches thrown. Yep. And yeah, it was a I fun liked one. it. 
On to the heavyweights, though. Now we get to the big boys. We had Stefan Struve losing decision. I just have decision. to say one other thing. I yeah. really had nostalgic moments during the fight. I never thought I'd see Kat Zangano get fight again. It was a it nostalgic been the last time. Even, even walking into the ring, I even think sitting on the stool, she knew it was the last time. I agree. She knew her knee was fucked. And she's too old to go through the surgery. And even yep. just... But her name's big enough in this sport. Yeah, her she can do other enough. stuff. She's a, I think she has a lot of respect here, and I think she needs to be really smart, maybe even sit down with some of the ex-fighters who are doing it right and just get a little advice, whether mm -hmm. that be a Dom Cruz or whether that be a Brennan Schaub or whether that be... I think Kat has a... there. She has a market here, and I even think her name, the whole thing. So moving on to the heavyweights. <laughs> with these big boys, ended up saying a little bit here at Labby that... The heavyweights, it either finishes real quick or as of late-ish, a lot of these heavyweight bouts go to decision. Andre Arlovsky has a winkle John plan, even though he's been over at ATT for a while, but he stayed away, used his right to almost finish Struve a few times. Struve, I don't feel like ever really put Andre Arlovsky in too much trouble on the ground. There was a few worries, not on the ground. Ah. No, well, Arlovsky kept backing out because he didn't even want to fuck with him on the ground, which is a great game plan by Arlovsky. Ended up... Calling this for the underdog in Arlovsky. Cashed out plus 450 oh, on Movada nice. for the decision in the heavyweight division just because of that game plan of, like, he doesn't want to swing in there anymore. A guy that's younger, more athletic, and moves faster than Strevin Struve. Maybe not younger because he's still pretty young, but going to be fading Stefan Struve like I've been wanting to for the last little while. Andre Arlovsky against the up-and-coming more of a prospect, someone to look out for, but he's really adjusted his game plan. I'm iffy on... I'm tentative on both of these fighters going forward. Arlovsky, though, made a lot of money for me on DraftKings. He really came through on shit ton of my parlays. He really came through. I, you, you were dead on on this call. This was something that... It definitely would have changed my night for the better. I did not have Andre anywhere, but I had still had an okay night. Uh... Stefan Struve, I'm not going to fade him only because he's the guy in the division for these heavyweights that they've never fought a tall guy taller than them. Mm -hmm. They've never fought a bigger guy bigger than them. I still think he's a gatekeeper. Uh, he looked dangerous to me. It was like he never pulled the trigger or was that a testament to really how good Andre's looking right now? <laughs> I feel like the commentators were saying this and I... Don't mean to toot my own horn too much, but they were saying as well, Stefan Struve is super tall, but he doesn't use his length. The kicks, he should kick more to keep Andre on the outside. And he was doing that, and he was keeping him on the outside. But then as he got tired, all those kicks went away, and then the way he's punching, he's punching inside the box when you got long arms. He needs to use elbows on the inside like we saw later on in the night, or keep him at the end, but he just doesn't do that. Yeah, so. he just doesn't have a really great game plan. That was... I, Andre Arlovsky actually impressed me, and he did take a few shots in that fight that normally would have knocked out the Andre. So did Struve, though. Struve yeah. had a couple right hand, piston right hands at Andre. I'm interested still in both guys going forward, and I can't Tentative. believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I enjoyed that fight way more than I thought I was it going was, to. It was Especially for it to go to decision. I can't believe how much Either I enjoyed it. Either fighter was close to being knocked out a few times over. On to... A, another dynamic showing. This one went to decision. I had Andre Silkhamthath, the Asian sensation, over Sean O'Malley, but... On air. On but. air. But once we watched the weigh-ins, I was texting Lesbo, telling her, like, hey, I don't like that face-off. O'Malley called it himself 100%. When the Asian sensation slapped away we O'Malley's hands... We have rules hands, here. Whoever touches about the other fighter first is going to lose. They're, they already let that adrenaline spike, so the other guy controlled that moment. And O'Malley said it on the embedded afterwards. He goes, that guy's so mad right now at me, he wants to throw all of his weight into his punches. I was even saying on the show, I feel like, Asian sensation has a puncher's chance, which traditionally you do not, unless you're betting on Derek Lewis, want to bet on that, especially in the lighter weight divisions. Puncher's chance is just one out where O'Malley had multiple outs, and he showed that. This fight, we saw the dexterity, all of the fun angles. In O'Malley, he does get hit a little bit more for than my liking, um, but he showed that he has a good chin in there. Regardless, got a good game plan. And, as we were saying before, we saw the grit and heart tested for O'Malley <laughs> that not a lot of people get to see 
I think that this was such a gut check time for him that I'm going to be putting so much more money on O'Malley. He broke his foot, or he believes he broke he his did, foot. He did something to the lower extremity. In of the last his... three minutes of the third round? Yes. So, but, yes, yeah. right around the last there. Round. O'Malley was winning that fight regardless. Um, he just kept Sohamteth at the end of the punches. In the, second, in the beginning of the rounds, Sohamteth would blitz him and show that he had those bra- uh, those um, brightness that maybe he could catch him, but O'Malley stayed away just enough. He then threw a question mark kick, was picking apart uh, O'Malley's leg, or not, so Camp That's legs. Remember, there was a couple leg kicks in there where so Camp That was on his knee like, oh, oh shit. Oh, my gosh. Oh, shit. There was a leg kick that looked like it kicked his ankle so hard, it knobbed his ankle and knee on Into his, his other, other knee, knee and that ankle. hurt him. Yeah. <laughs> It was, he was barely hanging on as well. So against the Asian sensation, leg kicks are going to be a big plan against him. So then it, O'Malley throws in the third round a question mark kick. It, I felt like it bounced off of the forearm and back of the head of the Asian sensation and it broke the top of his foot. But immediately O'Malley put his foot down and picked it up off the ground. You could see that he was injured. Same as Kat Zingano. He was um, on it. Very ginger. You, very could ge- you could really tell. And then the Asian sensation, Ginja. though, had almost been finished in that second round mm-hmm. and went in for a takedown. Almost finished in the first round. Oh, first round. But either way, um, went in second for the takedown. Round. This was the third round, yeah. This is where I got to put money against the Asian sensation against most Lowest other ring fights. IQ. I was telling you all night. The like, whole time. Look at this ring IQ. This is horrible. And even the commentator started to say it. Stand up you because a stand. ref will call that fight You're off like, and you can't stand. All he has, also, hand that has to do right now is stand up and back three feet back and he wins this fight. He wins this fight because the ref will say, Let me get the dock in here, gets the dock, and he'll say, Can you stand on it? Nope. And TKO, you win. you win. There's a John Jones toe situation. Shale Sonnen could have been the champ because of that toe. But so, Camp that for whatever reason, maybe his bell was rung. Either way, what it shows me is that I can't put any fucking trust in Sohamtath even more because yeah. he could have won that fight multiple times over and instead shot, shot, shot. Even on the ground, O'Malley put his foot up in the air backwards along the cage just so he wouldn't touch on the ground. And so Hamtath is trying to play this ground game that he's worse <laughs> You know at. the it fall so... we always talk about? The dead drop where you put your leg behind it and you go, ah! Oh, like that yeah. gay guys do really good. Yeah, um, right. Certain gay guys. I don't want to just go blank at all Drag gay guys. Drag queen gay guys. Ah! Dead, dead drop. drop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what Sugar Shane was doing against the fence. He had his leg all bent back. Uh, all I kept singing the whole time was, nah, 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 really needed to get by. Gotta have it, gotta have it. Hashtag sugar high. S-U-G-A. I love Sean O'Malley. I don't know how many great fighters we compared when we were watching him in those fights. I'm glad he went to decision. I'm not glad he hurt himself, but seeing that gut check... Whoa, you know the kid's tough. So yep. now you add that to, we saw some Stephen Wonderboy kicks. We saw TJ and Dominic Cruz footwork. We saw, uh, we compared him to Nick Diaz from his back. Nate Diaz from his back. We compared him to Tony Ferguson. We were just, he looked incre- He looked like somebody added together the best parts of a whole bunch of fighters. Yep. And I don't want to get super high because I don't want to put Sohamthas up there with the top of the division. Uh, exactly. But Sohamthas is still good enough that I'm not going to fade him yet. I still think he's going to, there's guys that cannot take him yet. But not Sugar. Not Sugar Shane. He's my baby boy. <laughs> That's my baby. If you got diabetes, be careful. That's my baby. He give you a sweet tooth. <laughs> so That fight was so exciting. It was. I'm really interested to see what x-rays come up, how long it's going to be for O'Malley. He likes to fight a lot, but from what it looked like, as soon as that bell rung, he was... Crying, literally. He, and he was, was tough enough to do the interview from his back with Joe Rogan, which, which was we fucking loved. Badass. And we all loved it. I actually <laughs> saw Dana in the after, the post fight presser, and he was. I don't know if he made a comment about Joe. Like, I don't know why the, he did the interview from his back. He should have back because they probably can't use those clips later on when they're trying to press Sugar Shane when he's doing an interview from his back. But for real MMA fans, we liked that. I love moment. it. We thought it showed how tough he was, that this is how hurt. But the dumb part we thought was not at all Joe. We love Joe Rogan. We love the whole exchange. 
the worst part was the doctors and the medical people in the ring. <laughs> why Why didn't you put a stool under his leg? Why didn't you pull his body back to flat to begin with? Compression. Why didn't you put a compression? Like, the, the amount of stupid stuff they were doing just having his body... Sh- there was, like... You, there might have as well have been a monkey just playing with his leg. He just, came, the doctor came hurt? in and grabbed his leg does and is like, hurt? where does it hurt? And squeezed. It was, I was so, so bad. Ah, that hurts. It's like the doctors <laughs> made him cry. Like, just let him be. Let him back up. Help him to his feet. You know, whatever has to happen. But I do feel like that part was handled wrong. But to, in my opinion, Joe Rogan, that was amazing. Don't give Joe shit for that. Dana. Yeah, I agree. Real quick, in the commentating of the night, I really love the three-person panel, Anik, Cormier, and Joe. Joe Rogan, though, as we were saying here at Lab B, since day one, yeah. as soon as Jimmy B. Smith came on, we that's the replacement. We said before Jimmy Smith. Yep. Well, we were saying this is because especially we the replacement. we were actually saying before Jimmy Smith how good DC and Dom were doing that I'm not missing Joe as much as I thought. Yep. Anik has Michael, stepped it up, too. Anik. People are yeah. not giving him credit. Yeah. But... Joe is really just like my boyfriend. Fuck this. Who's my boyfriend that does it in Europe? Be Tom sure. Hardy. Oh, uh, Dan Hardy. Dan Hardy. <laughs> so, Joe though is talking tons of shit on the refs, on the judging, saying what he wants. I really like the looseness Joe has because he's saying shit that other people can't get away with because he's got a backup job. He's um, got a podcast. We like to call it. it. He got fuck you money. He does Joe Rogan money. has fuck you money. His in in all intents and purposes, he might be the second biggest radio show in the world behind Howard Stern. Yeah, if not bigger, bigger because of serious the lies about their fucking. <laughs> if not, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I think they had like thirty million um, subscribers, which you know, let's say. Probably a majority of those are listening to Howard, but Joe doesn't have to put advertising. He doesn't have to do shit for his. He's still going to make a mint, mm-hmm. and he can add all the advertising into it, and he has it on it, and he, it, like, he can have on his friends and promote their podcast and help them out, and yep. like that whole network's growing. It's not just serious brass. So even Daniel Cormier a few times was like, oh, Joe Rogan, somebody come get Joe Rogan. Joe so, Rogan trying to get yeah, me in trouble with that lady. <laughs> <laughs> somebody come get Joe Rogan. Stop talking I, about Adelaide Bird. He's trying to get me in trouble with that lady. I love it because yeah. Cormier is a fighter and he's like, this bitch might call my fight. And Joe Rogan was already letting us know that he is going to be doing two, UFC 223, the <laughs> Khabib Ferguson and Joe Jim. JJ Rose, and then he was like, "You DC, if you're not with me, because it sounded like DC might not be at the table with him." But oh, he right, said, right, right. But "I'm gonna find you for We're during that Rose road. JJ fight, and if Rose wins again, I want Thug Rose, Thug Rose." We gonna be cheek to cheek, Joe Rogan. Yeah, we gonna be, we gonna be kissing. <laughs> we gonna be kissing. <laughs> it was. They were funny. So, they were cracking me up. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then they were. You better be careful. What about if JJ wins? I don't want the boogie woman to come get me. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny. With all of that. Um, oh, which I have to say, Joe Rogan, please this week. Easy peasy. Can you have DC on? I need to see three hours of you guys together. It really made me love Joe Rogan again. I need to see that kind of side of him and not just these scientists after political guys on the JRE show. Right. After Archer, after Archer, after Archer, (laughs) after Bigfoot. Let's talk about Bigfoot. (laughs) No, let's talk about Daniel Cormier. That fight, though, with Khabib versus Tony Ferguson, I almost... Don't want to say it out loud because it's holding on by such a fucking thread right now that to utter the wrong words around those motherfuckers, that fight could be pulled. So I want to get hyped. And no one even joke around about it because I yep. I just I'm automatically going to be ready like, to retweet canceled. that shit. Ready to retweet Motherfucker, that shit. Motherfucker, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Yep. So we, we're, we're hanging on by a thread. I can't. My nerves. My nerves can't take it. Let's just and that's slow the other down on reason that one. why I believe Dana hasn't stripped Connor because I believe if we feel this way, he's like, I don't want to strip my money bags of this belt and this <laughs> fight never happens. And then I have Tony sitting there as a dead champion with no one left to fight in the division. Just wrap either of those fighters in bubble wrap, put them in an isolation tank, put them <laughs> in a jail. That's a good way to like, say it. Dude, those fucking. That is a good way to say out. it. Chill out. Just work on your cardio. Just that work on your cardio. That fight card 223 is like Hype 205. City. Might have to pay some money for that one. Oh, yeah. I can't even deal. I can't even deal. So, to the co-main event, the real main event, we Hashtag have... Sugar High, Sugar Shane, I love you. I love you. We might have to make a Sugar I Shane. I love you. I love you, Sugar I game. love you, Sugar. I love you. 
I might have, but we do, we might have to make a cool Sugar Shane shirt. And why we're talking about shirts, you can get our Trust Us what? Man what? on, uh, you can look on our Twitter. We have some place where you can buy that shirt. It's our uh, Usman shirt. That's for any ride or die. This is why you trust us, man. Yeah. Because we had a hell of a night. You also remember to subscribe wherever you can. Oh, yeah. And hit that even, little bell. That's what I was about oh, to say. I have to say one other thing. We, I don't think we say this enough. Thank you. Thanks for listening, and we love you guys. <laughs> all of them. Even Ollie himself. Not Oily, which I not think Oily. Oily. I think Oily's way fucking better of a name. Oily Dicko. <laughs> Unless your name's <laughs> Oliver, and then it's... Which is Ollie Dicko, apparently. Yeah. So, <laughs> so to... thank you. And he had his own Leslie dog, a Leslie Smith underdog pick, and he went with Brian Ortega, like Lesbo. And Lesbo was 100% spot on. Frankie Edgar did not need to take this fight. Like Benil Dariush. Just saying. Both of those fighters could have benefited from playing this game that everyone else is. And this is why a lot of these fighters right now are not taking fights. And not doing that because Frankie Edgar was the number two about to get a title shot. And now he's the, the back of the line. Get a back, back of the line. Get Same with Dariush. Back. back of the line. And they now potentially are making less money. They now potentially are making less sponsorships, getting less points. Frankie, not as much as Dariush because he has such a long following. Yeah. But that's why the game is played the way it's being played now, unfortunately. Ortega. You have to doing say, okay though, about, Frankie right. Edgar is a... Conor McGregor actually tweeted it out, but I think Max Holloway tweeted out some great stuff, too. He didn't have to take this fight at all. I would find the words that Max Holloway wrote. They were actually a lot more poetic and touching than Conor McGregor's. The same thing, a real fighter. A real fighter's fighter. A real fighter, fighter. yeah. And that's one of the beautiful parts about this fight for Frankie Edgar. I like that he still got in there. I still think he's a dangerous guy, and usually at a guy his age, I'd want to fade, but Frankie Edgar's got some fights left in him. Oh. As bad as this fight looked at the end, I thought he was looking tight at the beginning. He was doing everything. And then I was wondering this um, for the fight, and I was going to ask you about it afterward when I replayed the fight in my head. Do you think that first triangle attempt that T-City went for was purely a Josh to get Frankie nervous about a different thing to then go in with the striking? Because nope. he kept saying it over and over again, and then it looked like his game plan was completely different. It looked like he actually went in to strike this time and got Frankie all worried about the triangle. Sure. And so then this is really the first time that we've ever seen Frankie in there. First time I can remember with my watching career that Frankie didn't really have the upper hand on the ground where he knew it. Like a comfort zone. He could have felt that on the ground, but I was assuming and Frankie was saying like, eh, I'm okay on the ground, but did try to get out of there. Frankie did stay away from it. Um... A lot of people have said the first time Frankie's ever been finished ever was well, against Brian T. City. If he had him worried about it once, and Fra you know Brian T. City, he yep. said he weighed uh, I think 168 pounds when he walked in. That's not unusual for Frankie though, as far as seeing those guys because he's fought many but guys for that, that, kind that, of, that big. Most of the guys that are bigger than him, Frankie doesn't have to worry about them taking him down when he gets inside with a sure. shorter reach. Sure, sure, so sure. I felt like it was harder for Frankie to find that reach at all because he was also worried about that takedown once he was up close. Frankie actually had three inch reach advantage. Remember. Oh, yeah, monkey arm. Yeah, That's big so old, weird. long old arm. But I don't... Reach advantage of just the arms when you have height involved. Right. It doesn't translate so as well as in boxing. Frankie looked good. Both looked good. T-City, what I really loved about him, even though we didn't see that gas tank and all that later on, but Frankie's still top dog in that. He's not going to move too, too far back down. What started off the finish in the beginning of the first round was a elbow. T-City landed an inside elbow, but he said the same things. Like, once you get past my arms, this is what Stefan Struve should do. Once you get past that punch, I got my elbows. Mm -hmm. I should use them. It wobbled Frankie, and then Frankie went to immediately cl clinch because he's hurt. And T-City threw a few punches, and an uppercut comes right underneath and off of his feet. Frankie Edgar was literally yeah. off of his feet, out on the ground. Two hammer fists just to make sure. I don't think it was a late stoppage. Um... And just for people that would have said it was early, I think those two punches, it was definitive. He wasn't out cold. Frankie wasn't out cold, but he was. it was over. 
It was over. There's no way around it. Some people on Twitter were like, oh, he could have taken more. Why? 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 And that's the Why? other argument, too. These are our legends. Yes. Like, our Mark Hunts and our Frankie Edgars and our... We got to protect them, and that's why we want the best refs in there during those times. I do not want them taking three extra... That was extra a great stop. Even think back to the Daniel Cormier-John Jones fight. I don't need DC taking two extra elbows. We're... I don't need Francis Naganu laying one extra punch, because yeah. that one extra punch is one fight these guys might not have later on because of damage. A year of their life, literally. We, 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 this is probably another reason that we hype Leslie Smith so much as our underdog all the time is because her fight for these fighters in the union, we love fighters. We might talk shit sometimes, but we want these people to thrive. We want to see them in every aspect of sure. the, the same way you guys see your football players and your basketball players through commercials and even like old ass Joe Montana selling arthritis medication. That's what I want to see Chuck Liddell doing in the next 10 years. Like I want to see these fighters safe and protected and it starts with that kind of shit. I don't want Frankie Edgar taking two other punches so some Twitter bug in his basement can feel good about that stoppage. A solid stoppage. So that ref actually, and I didn't grab his name, was the same ref that called the CB Hector Lombard fight, which, as I was saying before, I really like that ref because he went and asked other refs before that disqualification and didn't just make, uh, because once he does some, a certain thing, it's fucked. Once he waves his hands, doesn't matter. No one can come in, but he had the sound of mine to not wave that fight off, ask other refs, and then came up with the DQ. Same with this fight, as we're saying. He came in and did the right stop. I really like that guy. We haven't seen yeah. him too much in there. Just saying. And speaking he's gonna... of guys that we didn't know their name, and I wanted to give a proper shout out to, um, and I'm sorry it's after the loss, but Frank Edgar's striking coach. Mark, Mark Henry. Yeah. Mark Henry. We remembered it right after we got <laughs> off air. We were right. like, damn, we should have known that name and then some. So Mark Henry, uh, shout out elite coach and Frankie striking looked amazing. The big surprise I think to everyone involved was how good T city striking looked. Yep. 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 And all of a sudden the 145 division is shook it up for the bad. And are you excited Woo! about Brian versus Max? All fucking day. That's a hell. That's a nasty for anybody. That's a good fight. For, that's a fun. The number uh, one fight. reason I'm excited about that fight is in my opinion, both dudes are kind of ready to move up to 155. That's exactly what I'm and thinking. so two heavy heavyweights like that, two tall guys like that, that's a good fight. Habib versus T-City off of his back? Think about that. Top wrestling versus somebody who's ultra nasty on the ground, but we have that. Once oh. we get to 155, but I will be honest, by the time Brian Ortega and Max walk to 155, Habib's moving up to, there will be a new division Or 65. For him. Yeah, there will be a new division. Connor's already chatting about this division. I think it's all prepping for this Connor GSP or the Connor Nate 3. But either way, we're going to get that division between 170 and hope 155. So. Hope so, hope so. To the main event, we have Christian Cyborg being a minus 1,600 favorite against debuting Kunitskaya getting paid $100,000. No win money bonus. First time she's been at the main event and she had a good showing. She got hurt. Initially in that first round. Very first punch. Got her and went directly to a low single. Ended up actually taking down Cyborg. No, it wasn't even. Was it an ankle pick? An she well, fell right no, no, to her no. ankle. Peek. It wasn't an ankle pick because that's a different movement. It was a it was a low single. Um, they call it a... I learned it as a frog hop. You could call it an ankle pick. Either way, it was on a single leg. She put the shin right in her uh, clavicle and pulled it down. Cyborg went down. Did this end in the first or second round? First. First round at the end of the first? 325 um, in round one. Cyborg got up. There was a minute. There was a few minutes that we were like, Cyborg never looked scared. You even mentioned it one time that Kunitskaya got her up against the, and looked like she was attempting a submission up against the cage. And you're like, look at Cyborg is literally laughing. She's laughing and smiling. And she was. She was. She's like, oh, this lady's going to get me. But uh, Cyborg... <laughs> Trains with some beasts of per of people. Minus sixteen hundred. What is there to break down? We need Megan Anderson, or I mean, that's the only you really said fight. Megan Anderson or Demetrius Johnson. Those yeah. are really the only fights left for, <laughs> left for, for her. For reals, for reals. Um, she's just so damn well rounded. All the she's way around. Just so damn well rounded. The UFC is going to do her a disservice if they keep letting her meat grind the 135 division. It also, you could have had a Kunitskaya come into your 135, given her two fights. She could have been undefeated, and mm -hmm. now people are interested against her in noons. Now, you've taken every single new girl coming into the UFC and given them this friggin' loss on their record versus Chris Cyborg. It doesn't make any sense to me. 
you need 145s. You need one even it does even if they're can 145s, at least it's a division you're building. Right. Right, right, right. As far as Cyborg, don't need to really break down her future. She's going to be a champ until she probably gets out of here. Unless we see someone who's really up and coming, which that's not a near prospect. Even Anderson's going to have a tough time. And with I her. do not know why the UFC is making such a hard time of bringing Anderson in. I think they were going to for a period and she got injured. Visa, visa issues. Oh, it's all... And it's she's all, Australian, all visa, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. All visa issues. With Kunitskaya, though, I'm going to bet her in a couple of other fights. She took down Cyborg, got right to her back... Didn't really show the striking, but that's because she immediately took a punch and was fucking two sheets to the wind. She was Well, she did something really stupid. She actually said Cyborg doesn't knock out people like Holly knocks people out. <laughs> she said Cyborg doesn't have that much power. Yeah, right, sucker. Your knees showed she doesn't have that. Your knees went whoop. And you went right for that fucking I ankle. Was, I thought Chris Cyborg became the boogie woman. <laughs> I was like, run, Kunin Sky, out, run. I saw but, the anger but, build in Cyborg's face. What like, I all do. right, this is shit. Because Ky- Cyborg kind of wants to show us now. Like, look at my whole skill set. And right. she got pissed. You could see that, like, all right, but, I got this fly around me. <laughs> what I loved about Kunin Sky of against somebody else, she gets hurt takes them down, she wins that fight if she gets to their back and is able to submit them. I agree. She did that to Cyborg. She's yeah. going to be able to do that to a lot I of other agree. women that aren't there. Like There's her. money. And in the 135 her. division. I yep. really like Kunitskaya going forward in her She could be a contender. Class. Give her time, though. She's growing. Something that I have to say about Sugar Shane, since we we're talking about this, and there's really not too much to break down about Christiana and Cyborg. Uh, Sugar Shane, the, one of the things I liked best about his fight, and we talked about it, is his patience to not rush in once he had Sohan Beth injured. Agreed. He really, it, he sh- the amount of growth I'm seeing in this kid just in the last fight is like, holy Same with hell. Ortiz. Yeah, very Same, good point. But, but both very cool and composed and realized. So Hamza, no. Doesn't O'Malley, he kind of look like Dustin Ortiz? Um, he, the <laughs> so, lay, uh, just the hair. Just, just crazy hair. Yeah, they both had it cornered Oh, and up. you said this too. Sugar Shane uh, had the best uh, braid job we've seen. Ortega did. Oh, Sugar Brian Shane. Ortega. Brian Ortega's Ortega. Look. Oh, I was talking no. about um, Sugar Shane looks like uh, not somebody that fought on this fight. Dustin or- Ortiz a little bit. Why am I blinking on Dustin Ortiz? He's that guy with the, curly hair. Oh, yeah, little. Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 a little bit. But um, Ortega had tightest braid job we've seen. By far. There is a sister out so there. so dope. There is a sister out there that should be proud of her work. Yeah, that was that clean. was the best His hair. deep receding hairline, they mixed it. right into it. It was super clean. The, it looked so tight that I wondered if he had a headache going in. That's what I was thinking. But was, with that, I'm, so I'm like, could he get cut? Would he cut around oh, his eyebrows? Because really it's point. pulling it or so tight. Or even a weird elbow, elbow would cause an easier yep, break. Because there's so much tension on that skin. It's a really good question. Just saying, just saying. Or just a good a good thing for women to think about. Like that bitch got her braids on tight. Uh-huh, exactly. You elbow like to the brow. Up. Elbow to the brow. Right up in and the And in that line. sugar sheen fight also, do you remember when So Ham that he had, he was down? You saw the hesitation in Sugar Shane. He was about to knee him. Sugar, so Ham that put his hands up and then he just he uh, kicked him. Or need him. And then so Hanthath looked like, hey, he's not allowed to do that to me. Oh, on the ground. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He tried to play the game and yeah. it was like O'Malley was right yeah. in to the body. You With can patience, kick to the body on the patience, ground. Patience, patience. Right. So I just really like that about Sugar so, Shane. Changing of the guardish to an extent this card really happened. Piles out of there. That was a new guy he fought. Uh, Stamen was a new guy. Freaking Ortiz. Not so much O'Malley, who was another new guy. Hernandez was a new guy, essentially. I loved it. It was. It a, was I thought it was a good fight car- night. It was a good fight night. It really was. A lot of split decisions, a lot of fun stuff, but the commentary Shitty judging, worked. great fights, great fighters. Great commentary, yeah. great. Great commentary. Right. Seeing Joe, Logan, or Joe Rogan get on the ground, all-time high. We BJ have never Penn. seen that before. Oh, yeah. Never, I ever seen it. that. BJ Penn coming out and rolling with Cyborg was great, fun as hell. Great, cool moment. Sean O'Malley is well coming out and doing his own and just not taking no for an answer. So much we can learn from this car. So much you can keep learning here at Lab B when you subscribe, when you get on these bets, Thank when you, you're making we money. We love you. And see, you can hit these buttons right here. I always want to do that my whole life. <laughs> hit these buttons right here. Make sure you like and subscribe or maybe hit another episode. And hopefully uh, the show just keeps getting better, better, tighter locked, more precise, like an android, like a cyborg. True, true. Let's move the beat!